What up, everybody? Welcome to the show. This right here is going to be another beautiful light video. I am going to be diving into my opinions on the game. I've had the privilege of seeing more than probably most people, and I have finally kind of developed my opinion on beautiful light. So stick around for that. I know a lot of you are probably cautiously optimistic about new titles. Like myself, we have seen so many flops in this hardcore tactical FPS genre, especially around extraction shooters. So I completely understand that, and that's how I'm approaching this review of everything I've seen. So without further ado, let's dial it in. So Beautiful Light's gonna be a PvPvPVE extraction shooter. That means there's gonna be PMCs of different factions, three-man teams, I think around 20 to 28 players somewhere on the map, depending on the map, and you're basically all going for the same thing, the artifact but I do believe there's gonna be traders and side quests on these maps as well, but they're basically streamlining a PVP experience. Now the other P in the PVPVP, VE, God, that's really hard to say, is going to be the anomaly. There's gonna be people able to spawn in kind of midway through the raid as a monster type of being, basically a scav type system for this type of game. Remember, it's a horror aspect, very sci-fi, spooky, dark environment that we have here. So that's the other players that are on the map. And then there's obviously going to be AI of different forms. Now, the gist of it, you spawn in, you go for the artifact. I think everybody probably understands that. And then you try to extract. When you pick up the artifact, you're more or less marked. People can see you and you pretty much fight for this. I think the artifacts are going to be the top priority of all these raids, which gives me a little worry on depth and the gameplay loop being a little stale after a few weeks of playing it. But they have assured us there's thick levels of depth here where there's different systems, different routes, different side tasks, traders, leveling up. We're going to get into that in a minute. So hopefully we have some longevity. And with the playtest being this month, we get to see a little bit of that. I know we won't get to see everything, but we get to see kind of that loop unfold. Now, if you want to hear me shut up and you just want to watch raw gameplay, if you have not seen that yet, I'm gonna put a video right here. Make sure you click on that and you can just see all of the raw footage that I've had right now and kind of form your own opinion. I wanna go over some of the systems first that I think are going to be really good. Let's start with the weather cycles, dark atmosphere and the environment. It seems like they gave a lot of effort and I understand why with it being a horror type of extraction shooter, very dark, scary, you know, intense, raids they took a lot of effort into the the atmosphere the weather things like that because from how i view the tactical extraction shooter it's already a high stakes scary heart racing feel that you get when playing it so to maximize that and add a horror element to it i think is a huge win and it can pay off big because that's already the nature of that genre all they're doing is amplifying it so with the weather cycles the atmosphere the fog Everything that they have that I've seen so far is beautiful, no pun intended. Let's talk about the game mode a little bit. With the anomaly and the extra player or players playing the anomaly, I think that's also a good twist. It gives people a different look from scaving. I know level zero extraction did kind of the same thing. And I think someone can pull it off. I don't know if it's gonna be beautiful light or level, level zero, but I think someone can absolutely twist that a little bit. Now they have a lot of information on that and they've given us an extended FAQ that I've, I'm gonna put in the description now. So you can kind of look at that. It's gonna be going over the things that I like and dislike. So apart from the atmosphere and weather, another thing that I think is huge because no one else is doing it. This is probably the, in my opinion, the biggest thing that they have going for them is going to be their skill tree. There's going to be a flat base progression stats of playing the game. Obviously, I guess we're doing missions and things like that, but there's also going to be the skill tree where you can, similar to RPGs, where you can level your character how you want to, to level them. So if you wanna make them more medic heavy or sniper heavy or stealth heavy or whatever, I, I haven't seen the exact attributes, but I think that's huge because we haven't really seen that in this space yet. So I believe they have that going for them because if you're going to make an extraction shooter, why not make your, why not be able to build your PMC from top to bottom the way you want them? And I think that's, that's huge. You're going to be able to unlock weapons, armor, meds, different gadgets, things like that through the traders by doing different quests similar to Tarkov. So there's also that as well. So they're adding another layer by doing the skill tree, which I think is unique to each player and uh, can be good for them in the long run. You will also be able to reset this tree if you do not like it, which I think is huge. If somebody, you know, develops it the wrong way, they can go ahead and reset it. There's gonna be different factions. Everybody's a PMC, they're QRF, but they're from different cities. 
and there's going to be lore behind them, which I think is huge as well. You know, you're going to be able to pick which kind of faction and how you want to go. It's it's very RPG like, and no one's really done that yet. So I really think they have that going for them. One thing I dislike so far is I have seen people able to revive. I know you'll need some type of medical item like a syringe or something. And I don't know how hard that will be to access. Uh, I, I think this is my opinion. I think in games like Tarkov, the finality of death and the high stakes gameplay when you have a lot of loot or you've completed something and you need to extract, dying is what makes us come back. Finality of death in the extraction titles is what hooks us. And I've made my opinion on this. I've played every game from Delta Force, ABI, all these other spinoffs of the extraction shooter, and they just don't hook me the same as a Tarkov. You know, Grey Zone Warfare dying and being able to fly back to your body, I, you know, I get it, but that doesn't really hook me the same and, I've, and the people I've talked to, it doesn't give you that type of hook, high stakes risk reward system as when you die, you're done. You lose everything, you know, better luck next time type thing. It's a gambling type of addiction that, you know, is is solid. And I, I think being able to revive in beautiful light is a is a loss. I think that's a con. I, I wish they would remove that. Maybe there's some systems I understand with the skill tree and stuff like that wanting to have it. But if you're going to have it, I think it should be rare. It should be hard to do. I would be fine with Tarkov. I think they've talked about this issuing the or having the defibrillator be a type of revive item. And when it's used, it's done. So like make it rare to where you, you cannot have that all the time. But being able to get knocked or killed and then revived, you know, it doesn't it takes away from that high risk, high reward type of feel with this with this genre. I think the anomaly is cool. Um, but I, I probably won't be playing it much. I, maybe they can add some stuff to it where it's enticing to me. But for me, I'm playing a tactical first person shooter. I, I personally, this is just me. I don't want to be running around as a dog in third person, you know, unless I have to, if it's very beneficial or something, maybe they'll make it that way. I've heard a few opinions from our boys in the collective, by the way, make sure you join that. I'm going to leave a link in the description below. They've kind of said the same thing. It's a tactical first person shooter and to get away from that and, and do that, uh, it's, it's kind of weird. But again, I'm down to try new things, so we'll see how it is. And with all these opinions, guys, I want to be clear, disclose, I am not partnered in any way with Beautiful Light, Deep Worlds. I'm, I'm not, I, I can have my own opinion here and they've encouraged us to do so. Everything that I'm saying here is coming directly from the heart and I'm not, I'm not incentivized to, to make something up. So just for future reference. I want to talk about the PDA system on the wrist. I think this is fire. I This is probably one of my top three things that I love about the game. Again, a realistic system, immersive, but you can pull up your PDA system on your wrist and you have your compass, your heart rate, your team status, all of that. You have a map, you can scan different stuff. There's all kinds of systems that are going to be implemented by the time early access arrives where you can look at that and then you can put it down and you are completely immersed in the game. There's very little HUD. They have a stamina bar, which I wish they would get rid of to some degree or maybe put that on the PDA as well. But it's it's great for screenshots. It looks good. I, I love that. So big W right there because you, you kind of get the best of both worlds. It's not so hardcore where you don't have anything and you need to, you need to go to a wiki to learn, but it's hardcore enough where your screen is clear and you have to actually pull out your, your wrist to look at some information that you need. I think that's a big win. Let's talk about the loadout menu. This is a little bit different and I'm still ignorant on this. I have a few questions, but one thing I've seen is making different loadouts and those loadouts costing a value, almost like CSGO or even like Black Ops system of making your, you know, the 10 point system of making your class. There's gonna be a USD based currency value and you can have these classes set up and then you pay for them. I don't really know what that looks like. I think. From what I understand, it's all going to come from traders. This is kind of a turnoff for most people, but I kind of see where they're going with it. So I'm just going to say it. When they release, there's going to be no wipes. There's going to be no economy. They've talked about potentially letting the artifacts be tradable, but there's no economy. You get everything from traders. So these builds, these loadouts that you make should be consistent across price unless they change them over time. So you kind of know what different kits and stuff that you're running is going to cost. There's two big avenues that I like about, about these types of games. One is the economy, so that's a bummer when I heard that. Two is a type of hideout system to show your progression, right? I don't know of all their systems. I don't know if, what other things you can get into besides just playing, but I hope they have other systems like that that you can kind of build up over time and represent, you know, just another layer of the game. Because there's no loot, or there, 
there's very little loot. You can loot off of PMCs, you can loot the artifact, and I think you can basically just loot stuff that you need. There's no barter items and stuff like that because there's no economy. So I don't really know if that's a pro or con. It's probably a pro because of how they're designing their game. It's already very intense to go in there and have to, it's very dark in nature, spooky, and to be trying to loot barter items. I, like, I, I get it. I can see the appeal. We'll see how that turns out. I haven't made my decision on if I think that's a good move or not. They have 12 modeled weapons, but I've seen a list of a bunch of weapons they're working on, and I'm very impressed with how much they have in the pipeline and how they've modeled some of these weapons. It is absolutely beautiful. These developers are insane at how they're using these assets from UE5 and kind of twisting them to their own liking and, and giving them some character. So as far as weapon customization, I'm, I'm kind of indifferent on this as well. There's going to be different types of tiered weapons, tier one through three. Uh, tier three is going to be obviously a fully kitted out weapon. Tier one will have like no sights, no grips, things like that. I don't know how free for now that's going to be as far as weapon customizations and stuff like that. But at least there's something. You're going to be able to unlock those different variants by completing quests and stuff like that through traders. So I think that's good. It at least gives you something to push forward because I love pushing for unlocking certain guns and things like that. That's really fun. For early access, they're going to try to target three maps with eventually eight maps in total. And I think they should try to up that a little bit over time. Unless, again, if the game is, has a lot of depth to it, then I'll shut my mouth on that. But if, if it's kind of a simple loop, we're going to need probably more maps than that at some point. Let's talk about customization. I think this is also a huge W and I, I, I'm waiting for someone to do this right. So you're not getting the economy. You, I don't know if you're going to be getting a hideout, things like that, but you are going to get a ton of customization. Helmet, backpacks, chem lights, which, which is basically a PID system so your teammates can know you're friendly. Tactical vest, gas mask, NVGs, the top of your head, head, glasses, neck, cape, top, gloves, PDA, belt, and pants, and I think there's going to be different skins and outfits and colors that you can put in with those, so I think that's a lot of customization, which is good. A big question about the game is going to be specs, and they have not released their minimum requirements, so I cannot go into details on that, but I do. I am worried about that quite a bit, but we'll just have to see how that pans out. So you need to join their Discord if you want to participate in these upcoming playtests this month. You're going to have to try to get certain roles. I'm not really sure how they're going to be letting people in and things like that. It's going to be a pretty tight session. But I think you should join their Discord nonetheless because this game is shaping up to be pretty good in my opinion. There's a ton of pros about the game, but in conclusion, like I said, there are a few things that are worrying to me. Lack of diverse content to create experience with longevity. And a little bit of performance is kind of a worry for me as well as not having an economy. But again, guys, I have not played, so I want you to take my opinion with a grain of salt. I do not know what I'm talking about. I'm only basing this off of everything that I've seen. I am still very excited to try Beautiful Light. I have been drooling over the gunplay, the, the audio, the, the visuals, the atmosphere, the spooky interactions with the AI. I think that I think what they have going for them with the, the high risk, high reward, intense adrenaline pumping genre that we have with most extraction shooters to add that layer on top of it of horror and fear and darkness, I think is a big win. And they should absolutely try to snowball that concept, which I think they're doing. But that's all I have for you guys. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, you know what to do. Also, make sure you join the CC. I've said that already to the description. I appreciate you watching this video and I will catch you on the next one. Thank you.